thank you, Madam Chair, dear all. Thank you for the opportunity to speak for Civil Society and Women's Major Group. As previously said, the situation for women and girls has gotten dramatically worse since the last review of SGD5. If you want to build back transformatively, the needs of women and girls must be addressed more comprehensively. First, more states should implement gender budgeting to ensure that the needs of women are prioritized and support by governments. States must also invest in strengthening data collection and analysis systems so they can better identify and address problems or gaps in the well-being of all women. Prioritize financing of policies and programs that guarantee universal access to the full spectrum of sexual and reproductive health services. This includes contraception and access to safe abortions. These services should be integrated of high quality and accessible to all women throughout their lives. During the COVID period, the rights of older women were severely curtailed. This must be reversed by ensuring that their voices are included in discussions about their rights and that they have autonomy to make their own decisions. Increasingly, civil society is under threat from government surveillance, state-sponsored violence and restriction on funding and resources. Increasing populism, authoritarianism and anti-rights lobbying are part of an interconnected ecosystem that is trying to undo gains made by human rights activists. To counteract this, governments must guarantee civic space for discussion and advocacy by funding civil society organizations and protecting free speech. And they should put place legal and other protections for women advocates and human rights defenders. We must also repeal laws and policies that discriminate against women and girls. These should be implemented to address sexual and gender-based violence and harmful practices. The digital gender divide, as previous speakers said, must be addressed. State governments should seek to remove barriers to digital access for women across the world, especially women at the grassroots and those that are low income or from other marginalized groups. Finally, we must ensure that women have an equal opportunity to lead, participate in and benefit from universal energy access and just and inclusive energy transition. Without women's active participation in leadership, the goals for environmental sustainability and achievement of all SDGs, including number 13 regarding climate action, will never be possible. Thank you.